Hey, what's up? How you doing? It's your friend Phil here, project management trainer and coach. Hope you're doing great. Welcome to 40 Days to PMP and CPM Exam Success. Today, we're taking a look at a process in human resource management. It's called Plan Human Resource Management. Human resource management, in my opinion, in what I've seen a lot of firms, is one of those knowledge areas that people often think belongs to the human resource department. And that's so untrue because HR in the world of the PMI is all about planning how to acquire the team, how to lead the team, and then actually doing it, doing what you planned. Now, that's not what HR does for you on your project, is it? That's not the job of HR. HR has a much wider responsibility, but in terms of project management, when we talk about human resource management, I would like you to think about leadership, leading a team, and leadership first starts with understanding the vision for the project, knowing the kind of people that you need to recruit to attain success on the project, and then methodically and intentionally acquiring those people that you need for your project. Going all out, looking for those people, making sure that those skill sets are in the forefront of the interview, looking for those skill sets, finding them in the right people, doing all sorts of tests, doing compatibility tests, where very specific qualities are looked for in a team for a project, making sure you, that you get the right people. You know, and getting the right people, it has to do with, first of all, activity resource requirements being understood. So we're going as far back to estimate activity resources in time management. You know, we talk about human equipment and material resources. Well, the human resource requirements that we are able to glean at that point become an input to this process. Okay. So plan human resource management is going to take those needs, those requirements, and it's going to intentionally plan how to match up those requirements with team members that we will be acquiring. Okay. So for that reason, HR and time management, they have that relationship. Um, if you're watching this in the 6th edition, bear in mind this changes in the 6th edition of the PMBOK guide. We will no longer be calling this human resource management. We'll be calling it something else, but I'm not going to go into that now. For the 5th edition, if you are watching it, then good. This video is still relevant. Now, something else you need to think about in human resource management is how this relates to cost management. Human resource management relates to cost management in that we need to think about our human resources. We need to think about rewarding them for a job well done. For that reason, when we think about cost management, we also need to be thinking about the human resources, that human resource factor, which has to do with rewards and recognition. A lot of times people don't really think about rewarding the team or recognizing the team, or it's an afterthought, but not in the world of the PMI. So HI is really big. It's, it's all about planning. How am I gonna get the team members? And then acquiring the team members, developing the team members by sending them for training, planning team building in an intentional fashion, not as an afterthought, and giving the team constructive feedback regularly that's what human resources is all about. But this first process, of course, it's about a plan. Coming out with a plan for how to acquire, develop, and manage the team. Okay, so we're in the planning process group. The major output, the human resource management plan. Now this, I would like you to go to your PMBOK guide, highlight this area. It could be a bit tricky. This is what makes HR tricky. The plan, the human resource management plan, has got several layers. So I would like you to please look out for the staff release plan. Find out where the staff release plan is within 
this bigger plan, the human resource management plan. Also, look for the stuff in management plan and understand the hierarchy of plans. You've got your human resource management plan, you've got your staff in management plan, and then you've got your staff release plan as a subset of that. And then we also talk about resource histograms. Try to understand where all this fits in. Part of this process, or part of this plan derived from this process, is different representations of staff assignments such as the RACI chart responsible, accountable, consult, inform and try to understand when an R is required, when an A is required, when a C is required, when an I is required. Also the term RAM responsibility assignment matrix is one you need to remember. If you haven't given enough time to study this stuff you know races and rams and human resource management plan I would highly advise it also the resource breakdown structure is something I would like you to look up again and understand what it is and try to decipher the difference between your resource breakdown structure and your organizational breakdown structure your OBS and how does your OBS tie into your WBS? What does it give you? It gives you RAM. Bear that in mind. WBS juxtaposed with an OBS on its side is going to give you a RAM. I'm not really certain that is in a lot of study guides. Certainly not in the PMBOK guide in that fashion. So you want to read a little bit wider to understand OBS plus WBS equals RAM. I know the DOE have got a, a very interesting PowerPoint where they show all this stuff on the web. You might want to Google that and look for that representation. It's quite interesting. And as far as the inputs are concerned, a very important input to this process is organizational process assets. And it is important because this is where we talk about the templates that already exist. You know, we talk about the tools and the templates that already exist within the firm to help us put together our plans, our races, our RAMs. Various organizations have specific ways of doing this. Okay, so organizational breakdown structures and so on. You get the templates for these from your organizational process assets. Also very important here is something known as organizational theory. Organizational theory involves these theories that are key in leading or managing organizations. I'm talking about theories such as McGregor's theory. You know, McGregor's theory cuts across the organization it's not just peculiar to one manager in there you know it's it's an idea of the whole organization's approach to management you know organizations with closed door policy or open door policy cuts across you know even though there might be people you might might be a few outliers within the firm but for the most part people gravitate towards that underlying organizational theory unspoken theory McGregor theory of X and Y. Now, one, one theory looks at, one part of the theory, theory, theory X, is the pessimist, the pessimistic manager. Theory Y, the optimistic manager. The manager who believes you can do, do no wrong. Uh, maybe not that, that much, maybe that you can work without supervision, you enjoy your work duties and so on. Versus the manager that is an impediment to employee morale, that thinks you're hopeless thinks you need to be managed and watched every second. You need to be beaten over the head with a stick. And then we have Maslow's theory. Just remember Maslow's theory, that pyramid, the various levels of the pyramid are important. People sing lullabies every Sunday is a mnemonic that I put together to help you remember the different levels. 
you know, so physiological, safety, love and belonging, um, esteem, and self-actualization, those different levels. Know what those levels are, know what they mean, um, and if you know, you're going from the bottom up, the lower levels need to be met before the higher levels. Another theory that is not talked about in the Pembok Guide, and you know, to be quite frank, I'm not sure how much of this stuff could appear on most exams, although there's a lot of talk on social media about it all the time, about these theories, when it relates to a PMP exam. Not the CAPM exam, by the way. This is more PMP. These theories, I would be more concerned if I was PMP than CAPM. I don't believe you'll find these on your CAPM exam. But um, Herzberg's theory, hygiene factors, H, Herzberg, H, hygiene. Try and make that connection. Um, which other theories do you need to remember? Um, if you are using a reliable study guide, check this stuff out. It's in there. You know, McClellan's theory, uh, Victor Vroom. Um, Victor Vroom's theory pretty much states people expect to be rewarded for putting in hard work. Expectancy theory, that's what it's called. But anyway, know all those theories and know your plan, your human resource management plan. All right. Well, that's it for me, from me for today. I wish you all the best in your studying. And we're, it's coming down to the wire here. I mean, we're going on to approaching day 30 at this rate. You know, so if you have skipped any of the days, catch up the days. You know, study up the days that you skipped. And remember, our 35 contact our course on praiseon.com is a really great self-study course for you to go through. This stuff, I'm telling you, should not replace your 35 contact hour course. So if you have not been for a 35 contact hour course, online, in person, virtually, whatever, visit praiseon.com and do that to make your study experience more wholesome and to be absolutely ready to face the beast. Okie doke. All the best. Speak to you tomorrow.